نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh praises for almighty allah who is alone in possessing his most splendid name and is the owner of unconquerable might praises for almighty allah who is unique having the highest names and the owner of tremendous might Allah Almighty is one without any partner or son there is nothing like him he neither perishes nor ends and nothing will be except that he wills We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the glorious creator of the universe for his magnificent bounties that he has bestowed upon us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his infinite blessings on the beloved and final prophet to mankind Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his noble family The messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's every action was greater than any other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified him sallallahu alaihi wasallam in both spirit and body and protected him sallallahu alaihi wasallam from all imperfections and blemishes. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's beauty was unrivaled. No eye had ever seen anything more beautiful than him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His character is sublime. and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the definition of perfection i pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with his nearness and purifies our hearts and instills within it the true love of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to follow in the prophetic sunnah with righteousness and sincerity until the last day and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the ability to speak the truth allahumma amin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the glorious Quran in Surah An-Nisa verse number 5. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, "And worship Allah and associate none with him and be good to parents and to relatives and to orphans and to needy and to the near neighbor and the distant neighbor and to the close companion and the traveler and to your male and female slaves." Indeed Allah does not like the arrogant the boastful. Say subhanallah. This is a verse of the Quran, the Quran which we recite which perhaps we don't even know what it means but I'm telling you the translation of what those verses of the Quran are. This book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this book of guidance, the book of truth, the book which comes to us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has has put within it everything, every form of guidance for us but it's up to us to unlock exactly what it is is for us to connect ourselves to the Quran al kareem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells and worship Allah and associate none with him and then Allah azza wa jal mentions several things about people to be good towards and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places a great emphasis on fulfilling the rights of various different types of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about the orphans he talks about your relatives he talks about those people who are needy those people who are travelers those people who are your distant neighbor and your near neighbor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about your connection and your responsibility to your companions to your friends but today inshallah i just want to focus on this part of the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and to the near neighbor and to the distant neighbor a lot of emphasis is mentioned on the rights of your neighbors but many people perhaps don't realize the extent of what emphasis this is in the commentary of this verse of the quran al kareem it's mentioned that the close neighbor is the house which is directly attached to your house ulama have mentioned that the close neighbor is the house which is directly attached to your house and the distant neighbor is the one who just lives within your neighborhood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse be good to the close neighbor and to the distant neighbor and in al-adab al-mufrad it's mentioned that the term neighbor and okay if we were to go into the definition of what actually a neighbor is they say that it's 40 houses in front of him 40 houses behind him 40 houses to his right 40 houses to his left So this is the definition of what a neighbor actually is. Often we think it's just the person who lives to this side, this lives to this side. According to this uh, narration, according to this explanation of this verse of the Quran, your neighbor is 40 houses in front of you, 40 houses behind, 40 houses to the right and 40 houses to the left. 
Believe me today, inshallah, ul Aziz, when we talk about the rights that our neighbors have and the way that we should be behaving with our neighbors today, you will be shocked if you have not heard these narrations before of what Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talk about when it comes to this. Hujjatul Islam Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala, he talks in relation to the neighbor's rights. And he says, remember, it is not only the right of a neighbor that one should avoid troubling him, but rather he should also tolerate the troubles caused by him. Imam Ghazali rahimahullah, he says, it's not just about you don't trouble him, but if he troubles you, for you to be able to tolerate this. And it also happens that a person does not trouble his neighbor and in return the neighbor doesn't trouble him. In this way, the right of a neighbor is not fulfilled. He says, say for example, you have a neighbor, you don't talk to him, he doesn't talk to you. You don't trouble him, he doesn't trouble you. He says the right of your neighbor is not fulfilled by this. He says, in this way, the right of a neighbor is not fulfilled. Therefore, one should not only bear the troubles, but rather it is necessary that he should also behave with him in a well and gentle way. Meaning, create a relationship with your neighbor. Create that relationship with him. Create your relationship with the person who lives directly next to you. Create the relationship with the people who are within your neighborhood. And do this for the sake of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Do this in order to spread the beautiful message of deen al-Islam. Now I want us to really think about and reflect on how we actually treat our own neighbors. The first question that I will ask is, do we even know who they are? The person who lives on either side of us, do we even know what their names are? Do we even know what their backgrounds are? Do we even know who they are, what age they are, what their requirements are, what their needs are? Let alone just here and here on either side. But go back to what the ulama have mentioned, what your neighbors are, 40 houses in front, 40 houses behind. 40 houses to the right, 40 houses to the left. Tell me, do we know these people who are within our neighborhoods? How have we made them feel? How have we tried to understand them? How have we made them feel comfortable knowing that there's a Muslim living next to them? And having a Muslim, a true Muslim, a true believer, a true lover of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallama living next to him, how have we made this person feel as if this is the greatest blessing that he could ever have? Because indeed, if we are true Muslims, the greatest blessing that a neighbor will have is knowing that this is a God-fearing Muslim who is living next to me. What's our behavior like towards them? And we will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't just feel that this is just a small right of your neighbors. We will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about our behavior towards our neighbors. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam summarizes this beautifully. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in this narration which is narrated in Shu'ab al-Iman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says regarding the rights of a neighbor. He says that when he asks for help, help him. Very simple. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when he asks for help, help him. When he asks for a loan, give him the loan. When he is needy, give to him. When he is ill, visit him to inquire about his health. When he receives goodness, congratulate him. When he is in trouble, console him. When he dies, attend his funeral. This is for Muslims. Do not make your building higher without his permission that may disrupt air ventilation to his house. I want to emphasize on this. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa 1500 years ago knew about the issues that would be faced today. Neighbor makes an extension. Other neighbor is not happy about it. What does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tell us? 1500 years ago. Don't build your houses so high. Don't build your walls so high that it becomes a nuisance to your neighbor that it blocks his, his air ventilation to that extent. The Prophet sallallahu said that this will cause an air ventilation issue to his house. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam knew all of the scenarios that were going to happen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us exactly what will happen. These are the concerns that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam was telling us. Do not hurt him with your food, but give him something from it. Meaning, if he is hungry and you are eating, do not hurt him with your food. Our ulama say that when you are cooking in your house, and if you know that your neighbor does not have food, do not allow the smell from the food of your home to go into his house. But rather, once you have cooked your food, make a portion of that food and give it to your neighbor. This is the extent of the rights that the neighbor has upon us. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says that if you buy dry fruit, also present him some. 
And if you do not want to present it to him, then bring it to your home secretly. To that extent, the Prophet ﷺ says, you know, how many times do we come home from shopping and you know, our boots are full, etc. and so forth. We don't have an intention to share it with our neighbors. And I say this is probably the majority of the case. Generally, when we go shopping, we don't have this intention within our, in, within our hearts, within our minds. The Prophet ﷺ says, if you don't have the intention to do that, bring it into your house secretly. Allahu Akbar. And your children should not go out with it because it may grieve the children of your neighbor. Meaning, if you have bought something specific for your ch children, an ice cream, f sweets, whatever it is, and you know that your neighbor also has these young children, do not just send your children out because the neighbor may not be, have those same things and therefore he may be aggrieved by this fact. The Prophet wasallam then says, do you know the right of your neighbor? By the one whose power my life is, there are few who completely fulfill the rights of their neighbors. They are those who have the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that the one from the entire list that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just said, has mentioned in this hadith which I just, I just said. The ones who fulfill these rights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are those people who have the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let us ask ourselves today, I ask myself the same question. Am I from amongst those people who has the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you from amongst those people who have the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in relation to this, this act of goodness? Are we from amongst those people who don't uphold the rights of our neighbors? Or are we from amongst those people who uphold the rights of our neighbors? You know, in the time of Imam Azam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, there used to be a qabla. And he was a drunkard. And Imam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he tells us of this, 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 uh, this story. He says that the person who used to live next to me, he was a qabla, but he was also a drunkard. And uh, he lived within the neighborhood of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. He says at night, he would become so drunk that he would spend the entire night singing poems. And he would often repeat this one verse. He would sing poems and he would repeat this one verse. People have let me go to waste. Who would have been useful to them in battle and siege? Meaning, people have made me go to waste. People have let me go to waste. I would have been a benefit for them in battle and siege. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala would spend his nights in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the great points which were emphasized by Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala was that of uh, tahajjud, meaning waking up in the latter part of the night and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coincidentally, this was the same time that this drunkard would be walking around the streets and this drunkard would be singing this one song, uh, he would be singing poems and he would repeat this one verse that people have let me go to waste for who I would have been useful to in battle and siege. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he would be awake at this time whilst other neighbors would be disturbed. Imam Abu Hanifa would already be awake in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Imam Abu Hanifa, even though he would hear this man, this drunkard, singing this song, singing these poems, he would never object to him. Meaning he would never open the window and tell him to be quiet or he would never go out and approach him in a negative way. Because this was not from the nature of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala because this is the teaching of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. One night, police officers of the local neighborhood, they were passing by and they arrested the neighbor of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah for his drunken behavior. On the following morning, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he mentioned to his friends, he said, you know, tonight was a very strange night. He said, it was the first night where I didn't hear my drunkard neighbor singing on the streets. He says, this is a very strange night for me. I would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but alongside with that, I would also hear my drunkard neighbor. He would be walking along the streets and he would be singing his poems. He says, I didn't hear this. So he's telling his Imam Abu Hanifa, he's telling his friends. And they informed Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. He said to him that, look, uh, ya Imam, he says, last night what happened was is that the police came and he was apprehended by the police and he's now in jail. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, the moment he heard that his, his neighbor was in jail, he went running to the jailhouse. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he ran to the jailhouse 
And he went not only there, but he went directly to the governor's house. And on being informed, the governor was informed that Imam Azam, Imam Ibu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala was coming. The governor sent several servants to Imam Ibu, Imam Ibu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. He sent them to receive Imam Ibu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. And he said that he should be escorted by horseback up to the courtyard of the governor's house. As soon as the Imam's horse approached, the governor came out and he received Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. He says, Oh Imam, what is the great trouble that you have caused yourself that you have come by your own volition to come and visit me without me, without me requesting for you to come? What's this great trouble that you've caused yourself to come to my home, to my house without, you know, I feel what is the necessity for you to come here? I didn't want you to be put at trouble. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he says directly for, uh, to the governor. The governor says, Oh Imam Azam, you didn't have to come here. You could have sent for me and I would have come to you. This is the maqam of Imam Abu Azam, Imam Azam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. The neighbor, the, the Imam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he then says to the governor, he says, the reason why I came directly to you he says, my neighbor was arrested last night by the police and I want him released. He said, my neighbor was arrested and I want him released. The governor, upon acting upon the instruction of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he ordered the release of the neighbor and he brought him to his house. And he informed the neighbor, he says, you have been set free. And both him and Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, they headed back to their homes. During the journey, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he said to the drunken man, he says, oh my friend, you used to sing this verse, people have let me go to waste. Imam Abu Hanifa says to him, did I let you go to waste? He said, did I let you go to waste? The man replied, he says, you did not let me go to waste, but rather you interceded on my behalf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow better reward upon you and for your act that you have taken care and respected your neighbor and fulfilled his right. It stated that this same neighbor embraced Deen al-Islam on the hands of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala and then he grew to become one of the greatest faqees of the time. He then went and studied with Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala to become one of the greatest jurists and scholars of the time. This is what it is. How Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala he showed, he knew that this was his neighbor nor did he allow his trouble to trouble him nor did he trouble him and the moment he heard that his neighbor was in trouble Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he did whatever he could in order to free him. And when he was freed, he saw the beautiful character of the beautiful religion of Deen al-Islam and he embraced the beautiful religion. Let us ask ourselves, could we have endured the same amount of patience? Is this something that could have been possible for me and you? Perhaps we would have been amongst those people to have called the police. Perhaps we would have been amongst those people celebrating the fact that this person has been taken away, let alone wanting to order the release of that person. But it all comes with the relationship that we build for those people. How much of a relationship has we built with our neighbors? That if that neighbor is going through some difficulty, if you know that that neighbor is, is finding himself in such difficulty, what actions have we taken in order to, in order to connect ourselves with, with, with our neighbor to create this relationship with them? But look at the wisdom of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala of him acting upon the great sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He went directly to the aid of, the, of his neighbor. It was the sincerity of Imam Abu Azam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala which was as a result that that person became a Muslim. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we sit within our homes knowing that we have been blessed with the pure origin of deen al-Islam. We act righteously. We pray our salah, we give our zakat, we go to perform hajj, we go to perform umrah, we fast in the month of Ramadan al kareem We act in accordance with the principles of sharia, we make azkar, we pray our voluntary prayers. But how many of us have been neglecting this, this right, this duty that we have towards our neighbors? We may have neighbors who have never heard about the religion of Islam. Or we may have neighbors who have a negative connotation in relation to the religion of Islam. But what have we done? What have I done? What have you done in order to change that impression that they have towards the religion? These will be those same neighbors on Yawm Al Qiyamah. If we have not given them the message of Islam, they will take us by the necks on the day of judgment. 
and they will say, I live next to him. He was a Muslim. He knew Allah was the truth. He knew about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he never conveyed this message to me. And many people ask, you know, how is it that I give da'wah to my neighbor? It's, it's you know, he's a non-Muslim or she's a non-Muslim. How can I give da'wah to that person? You know, this is why we encourage people to come to the gatherings of Kanzul Huda, where we have these tarbiyah lessons on how to actively give da'wah to these people. You know, our Sheikh has written a great uh, book on the 50 common objections to Islam. Study these books. Study what the common objections are. Respond back to those objections that they have. But one of the greatest ways that we can show them about the religion of Islam is by showing them through our characters. The prophetic character. Study the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Study the life of the Sahaba alayhi muridwan. And by studying the life of these great people, especially the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we will know how to interact with people. It's our character which is what shows. This is why when people would just see the character of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would say we don't need anything else because of his perfected character, we know that he is upon the truth. For example, you want to give da'wah to your neighbor. How do you do this? Let's say for example, one day, you are cooking, and this is again from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. You are cooking some food at home. You go and you present your neighbor with this food. And you do this consistently over the course of a day, couple of days. You offer to do the shopping for them. You offer to help them. You offer to do this. You offer to do that. And then sometimes they may ask you the question, why is it that you're helping me? What's the reason for this? You know, I don't know you. You don't know me. Why are you helping me? And it's at that point you say, this is because my beautiful religion of Islam teaches me to help my neighbors. It teaches me that not only do my family members have rights that I have to fulfill, but my neighbors have, have great rights that I have to fulfill. And I want to be from amongst those people who fulfill the rights of their neighbors. This is how you start that conversation about how to introduce the beautiful religion of Islam. Then whenever you go, you can talk about the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can give examples about how the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he would treat his neighbors. And believe me, if you do this with sincerity, you will soon find that the people who are around you, if they are non-Muslims, then they will become Muslims insha'Allah aziz. But have this intention for the reason why you're doing it. We are not trying to seek the praise of our neighbors. Oh, this person is a very nice person. No, our intention should be da'wah. Our intention should be, I want to help this person so that they can see my character because I want my character to be a reflection of the character of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And believe me, if we don't take action today, think of your neighbor, think of the people who live on either side of you. If we don't take action today, then these will be those same neighbors who will catch us on the Day of Judgment and they will say, Hasib knew. He knew about Islam. He knew about Allah. He knew about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final Prophet. He knew about all of these points. But he didn't tell me about it. They will take us by our throats according to the narration. They will take us by our necks and they will say to us that he knew the truth but he did not convey this message to me. We cannot be from amongst those people. We are people of da'wah. We are people of, of spreading the message of deen al-Islam. So make this intention today, my dear brothers, my dear sisters in Islam, that today, inshallah, we will go home and tomorrow, if the neighbors are asleep by that time, we will do whatever we can do in order to start by conveying this beautiful message of Islam to our neighbors, say inshallah. Remember the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to an angel to destroy a particular city with all of its people due to the disobedience that they showed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to this narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to an angel, O oh angel, go to such and such city and I want you to destroy this entire city. And this was because of the disrespect that they showed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This angel then goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Oh Allah, Within this city, although Allah knows in His majesty, O oh Allah, within this city is a righteous servant of yours, a pious servant of yours. He was obedient to you. 
He never disobeys you even for a blink of an eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, may his home be destroyed first. May he be destroyed first. May the city be turned over onto him and them for his face never showed signs of displeasure for my sake. What does this hadith mean? What's the, the meaning of this narration? Our neighbors are sinning. But if we let that continue without us trying to do something about it, do you think that we will freely walk into the gardens of Jannah? Do we think that that punishment won't come upon us? It will come to us. If we know that this is happening, we know this is happening on either side of us. We know this is happening within our neighborhood. What positive action have I taken? What positive action have you taken in order to change this? We come to these gatherings for what reason? In order to motivate ourselves to go out and give da'wah. To motivate ourselves to go out and invite people towards the beautiful religion of Deen al-Islam. But it starts at home. It starts in your surroundings. It starts with your neighbor. Just say hello to your neighbor. How are you? Many people, we don't even do that. We don't even want to acknowledge them. Make this a point within our lives that we will create this relationship and act upon this great sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about the severity of this. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, by Allah, he is not a believer. Listen to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By Allah, he is not a believer. Does he say this once? No. The Prophet sallallahu says again, By Allah, he is not a believer. By Allah, he is not a believer. Three times the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says this. By Allah.